as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a day the Lord has made that we may rejoice and be glad in it. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. And let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we bless your name. We exalt you, Lord. You're a good God. You are awesome. The Bible tells us that you're great, very great. We thank you, our God. And this morning, we appreciate that you've given us opportunity to share your word. And to honor you, Lord, with this moment, O oh God, of our lives. We thank you. I pray for every listener, O oh God, that they will get this message and grasp it and take action that your name may be exalted and glorified, O oh God. Give me a trance, Lord. Guide me and lead me in every word that I speak that will find lodging the hearts of men and women for the glory and honor of your name. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Again, it's a good moment again to be with us, uh, and I want to thank you uh, so much for again for uh, tuning in your TVs and even listening to this channel. We bless the Lord for that, and may God uh, literally bless you even as you continue listening. I trust that you've been uh, getting much knowledge and encouragement and even understanding of the ways of God, and you've been uh, helped in more than one way. Even as you've been listening to messages through the Revival TV. My name is Isaac Murioki, Pastor Isaac Murioki of Crisco Church, Umoja, Nairobi. And you're welcome there. Any moment you find yourself nearby, you're most welcome. Now, today I'm excited with, uh, as I share a message that um, came to my heart many, many years back. Uh, I want to start by giving you a testimony that. Um, Many, many years back, as early as 1995, I was attending a seminar. I was attending a seminar uh, in a church somewhere. And as one of the ministers came to speak to us, he told us of his history and his story. And he was one person who was trusting uh, for the salvation of the family members. And he said um, he... He had faith that all of them would be born again, including his mother, uh, who was a very religious woman. And it took the man 15 years of prayer and intercession until the last of them in the family got saved. And I grasped that. I, I, I had just been uh, newly born again, and I said, this is good. I think I would also wish to see all my, the members of my family born again. So I, I got this faith that it is possible to have the whole family born again. And I took it with me and I held to the faith. And sure, I also see, saw results. And um, after about maybe in my case, about eight years. Um, yeah, about how many years? About uh, 10 years. All my members, members of my family were born again from the day I had received that message. And this, so, uh, this brings the topic uh, today that we say salvation of the whole house or salvation of the whole family. And I want us to share a few ideas about what God desires about the family or the whole family being born again. And I want to pray that as you get this message, you'll be encouraged to pray for your family and to trust salvation for your whole family. Now, many of us, we have many family members. I bet all, all of us listen to this message. You have some family members who have not known Christ yet. And I, I am preaching to you because I know some of us deep in our hearts will desire to see change in our family members. There are some 
who are lost in alcoholism. There are some who are lost in prostitution. Some are lost in some religion, funny beliefs and all that. And we have the concern. Some maybe even have given up. And that's why I, we need to hear this message. You could have given up and said, to hell with them. I have done everything I could. I have prayed for them. I have done everything. But they don't seem to receive uh, Christ. Some of us even have even kind of uh, um, uh, cast them. Said they, 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 are, they are, And this I want to caution as uh, brethren, those who are listening to this message. Never uh, declare that a, a friend, a relative, or anyone has, has, I mean, has helped, destroyed himself or is destroying himself. Because nobody in real sense would wish to destroy himself or her shell. So they are all in bondage. And we should have concern. Instead of condemning them to uh, the works of the devil and the destruction of Satan, we should actually be encouraged to start praying and having a new fire to start with them. And so the Bible says, God wants to work with us. Uh, God, we, we, we are co-workers with God. God wants to work with us. Some of you understand, especially those from Christo Church, God says we are Christ, Christ co-workers, uh, fellowship. God wants to work with us. God wants to work with you for the sake of your family. He wants to work with me for the sake of my family. And then it's important to know what is the will of God concerning your family. What is the will of God concerning us all? And the Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verses 3 to 5 that this is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants Everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Don't imagine that it's not the will of God for anyone not to receive Christ. God wants all of us together to know, to come to the knowledge of Christ and to be born again. And so even as you listen to this message, even as you take it up to pray for family members, have this faith that it is the will of God that we all get the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so we're going to share... Uh, our, to- our, our message on a number of topics. And um, the first one we are saying, the true love for our relatives, our members of the family. What is the true love? Uh, and how can you show the true love? And the second, we're going to have a subheading. We're saying the concern by God for our relatives. Does God have, uh, does God have concern for our relatives? Is he concerned? Is, he, uh, is it an interest to him? Uh, that our families are saved. And the third one, we are, we are saying, what is God's plan for salvation of the whole family? What is his plan? And finally, we'll see what is our role, uh, mem- as we do, especially those of us who are born again, what is our role to ensure that members of the family uh, get saved? And so let's look first on the, the true love for our relatives. We, we passed through seasons when we give presents to our people. And some of us are very good. We, we buy our relatives all good things, goodies. We buy them uh, um, suits. We buy them uh, clothes. We even feed them and do a lot of such. And we're willing sometimes even to, to take them to for rehabs, for anything that we think uh, this would benefit these people. But there's the true love that we should have for these people is that they will never go to hell. Uh, you know, it's important to know that even if they had all the goodies they had in this world and miss a chance to go to heaven, they'll have lost it all. Because what does it tell it benefit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own life? Remember that uh, there's a small lake of fire where those who do not know Christ will end up. And we don't want to see our relatives in those places. Remember, as we hear the, the, the story of the rich man and the poor man, even when we have died, when we, are, when we have gone to, to heaven, we will still be able to see what happens to hell, borrowing from the Bible as we see. And the true love is whereby we have concern for our friends for our relatives. You have concern for your brother. You could be doing well, a very spiritual person. You love the Lord. You pray. But are you concerned that your brother, one of your brothers or your sisters, does not know Christ? What are you doing about it? You could be many of you in the family. You know Christ. But are you concerned about this one or two who do not know Christ? Could be your father. Could be your children. Have you, have you condemned them to the enemy? Could you be saying that this one, we have done everything we could 
that I want to assure you and encourage you that it is possible to have them also come to Christ. Now, the true love is established when we, we have feeling for people. I remember the story of, the, of King Solomon and the two women, uh, one, uh, one who stole the child from the other one, and they agreed they would, uh, uh, there was famine and they would, uh, one, the child died, and there was a dispute. There was a dispute. Now, the issue is there was a dispute. Who owns the child? Because one of the children had died um, uh, from one of the mothers. And the one who knew that this was her child, the King Solomon told them, uh, we're going to split this child into two. We're going to cut the child so that you get one portion and the other one the other portion. The one who did not have the concern for the child, she didn't care. She said, yeah, that's it. That's it. We can do that. But the one who had the... The, the, who knew this was her child and had the feeling for this child could not imagine seeing that. And this is a true love you're talking about. That if we truly love our family members, if we truly love one another, we'll have that burden, we'll have that concern for ourselves and we'll desire that they also get to know Christ. Now, some of us could be like that deceitful woman. We could be, we don't care so much about what happens to our relatives. We don't care so much. So for us, we think ourselves we are fine. Let's not adapt this attitude of holier than thou in the book of uh, Isaiah 65 and verses 5. Some of us could have the attitude of holier than thou. So for us, I'm good myself. My family is doing well. I am myself spiritually uh, empowered. I don't care about my relatives. I think I can do without them. That should not be the spirit. I want to remind you the story of the rich man uh, who went to hell. In the book of Luke chapter 16 and verses 19 uh, going on, the, the Bible says, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of souls, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed by the rich man. And we find that the Bible says, continue to say, clams, with the clams which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. That's in heaven. And uh, the rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in hates, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham a follow and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And said, Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Uh, one, uh, I want to point out that the suffering in hell. And none of us should wish to be in hell. We should. Whether you're born again, be careful. Walk carefully that you don't get into this fire. If you're not born again, you're getting this message. Be careful that you don't fall, you don't end up in hell. Because there's true fire uh, learning from the scriptures. Two, it doesn't mean because you're poor, you'll necessarily go to heaven. It doesn't mean that because you're poor, like Lazarus, you'll, you'll go to heaven. Some of us have been had this misconception that uh, poverty uh, is... Uh, is, is, is when you're poor, you're easily going to heaven. There are some who are poor who will never get to heaven. Now, uh, going on in verses 25, the Bible says, But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. Number 26. And besides all these, between us and you, there's a great gap fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot. Nor can those from here pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. This is uh, the cash word. The rich man wished that Lazarus would go to the earth, to the family, the father's house, uh, the, 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 the rich man's father's house. For I have five brothers, and he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. This is a word that you have a number of brothers. You have a number of sisters. You don't want to see them one day suffering in hell and you enjoying in heaven. 
you do it is it all it is wonderful and wise that you minister to them and that you do something about them if we can that they may also come to the knowledge of Christ. Uh, we should not wait until we are in heaven so that we can have mercy on our brothers and sisters and our children and our parents. While we are in this earth, there's something we can do. And this is what we really want to concern ourselves about. Remember that um, on the day of judgment also, the day of judgment, we'll see our, our, our relatives also approach the seat of judgment and finally thrown to the lake of fire. Now, we should therefore care and ask God, what can we do in our times so that our loved ones can be saved? What can you do today? What can you do for your brother? What can you do for your father? What can you do for your children? And so, uh, brethren, remember, the Lord desires that all may come to the knowledge of Christ. And we have a responsibility because we belong to those families. That's the reason God has attached us to those families. That's why the Lord has, have had, has, has had us in those families. That we may also carry the burden. That we not only fellowship in the good things of the family, but we also have concern for one another. For God is a God of family. As we are going to see that God loves families and we wish to see all the families con- I mean, saved. Now, we, we, the second part we're going to ask, what is God's concern for our relatives? What is God's concern for our relatives? Uh, and we're saying God, of course, knows that we are attached to those families. And um, even Jesus Christ the Lord, when he was on this earth, we find that he was also attached to a family. He was not over, he was not spiritual to be too far away and not to be concerned about his mother and his brothers, uh, and his family members. He was a family man. And we find he, that's why you find that Jesus was together with his mom in, in the, in the, in the wedding at at Cana. And, uh, he, he, and we also see at the time of almost, uh, he was being crucified in John 19, in the book of John 19, we find him being concerned about his mother. And of course, he could see the suffering of his mother and he was concerned. And he said in John, uh, in verses 26, and when Jesus saw his mother within the, the, the group that had uh, come to him and the disciples whom he loved, that is John, nearby, he said to his mother, dear woman, dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Jesus was concerned about his mother. He felt for her. He did not assume, oh, this lady, uh, I just, she was only used by God to carry me, to bring me to this earth. I don't have, I'm going to heaven. I'm going back to my father. It doesn't matter. He was concerned. And I'm sure he could not entrust the mother with any other person here. He entrusted the mother with the, the disciple whom he knew, his standing spiritually, and his true love. That's why he entrusted him on John, his disciple. And you see, the, although the Bible says that we should leave, we should uh, that uh, anyone who will cling to his family members will, uh, is not worthy of the Lord. But the Bible also says in the book of Mark, uh, I like this topic uh, a bit, uh, I mean a lot, and Mark 10 and verses 29 going to 31. Uh, and Jesus has said and said, Fairly I say unto you, there's no man that has, has left a uh, house of brethren or sisters, father and mother and wife or children or lads for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lads and, persecu- and, and, um, and with persecutions uh, in this world and internal life. But many that were first shall be last and the last shall be first. Jesus was telling the disciples, you must be willing to let go your emotions, your attachments to our blood family members. But he was not saying that we neglect them to the way we cannot support them. He was telling them that you should not, you should not love other issue, anyone else, anything else, more than you love Jesus. And so he was encouraging every one of us that we should not be carried away by our businesses, 
We should not carry be carried away by our business to the level that we cannot find time to fellowship with the Lord. We should not be carried away by the love of our blood brothers and and parents to the level that we are we cannot find time for Jesus. Jesus was encouraging them. If you really have to follow Him, you have to lay down your life, as He mentioned many times in the Bible. We have to lay down our lives and follow Him. But it's not mean that we ignore our family members. Uh, there has been cases of people who have been condemned. They are born again, but they are not relevant in their families. They, they, they have not been seen to add value in their, among their families. They have not been uh, an encouragement to the members of their family because they have just uh, hidden themselves in the, in the church, so to say. They have hidden themselves in areas whereby they are not concerned about their families. And this has been a challenge. That's been a challenge to the families that have not seen the good God that they pro- proclaim uh, to believe in. And so I-, I want to encourage us, all of us together, as the Lord helps us to think in these terms. What is it that you, 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 you have? What is your attitude? What has been your attitude towards some of the members of the family who are not born again? What have you been thinking about them? I know some of you could be like me. You say, I have done everything for them. I want to assure you, you have not done enough. It is very important that you take the time, take the time to seek the Lord, even concerning their lives. And, and I remember one story again. One time I was, I was, I, we were driving with a, 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 a gentleman and he gave me a very interesting testimony that uh, I keep remembering. He said he, he was in drugs. He had been in drugs for a long time, he, even to the level of injecting himself with, coca- with uh, those drugs, heroin. And he told me, sometimes you'd come home and basically be a bit messy, but the mother who was born again would always speak to her positive things. He would, she would always, always prophesy over, her, over his life. He would call, he would tell the man that you shall be an evangelist. You shall witness Christ in many nations. You shall do a number of positive things. The mother, it doesn't matter what the mess the man would do. The mother would always speak positive things about the man. And this time now when we're meeting with this man, we had come from a, a, a forum whereby he was there to share to people and encourage the people to stop drugs. And he was telling me God had given him opportunity, given him opportunity to go to many countries in the world just to speak to those people, especially those who've been passing through drugs uh, and have the need to in need herbs and all that, and encouraging them and praying for them. And now he is uh, actually speaking and uh, uh, and preaching uh, the word of God all over. And this is the encouragement, uh, brethren, to all of us, me and you, that what do we say about our unborn again? I mean, uh, those people who are not born again in our families. What do you speak of them? What do you call them? And I'm encouraging you, start giving, may God give inspiration to start speaking that to them, calling them good names. Some of them start calling them pastors if you're led to do so. Some of them start calling them evangelists because if you felt that you, you, you led that way. Start calling them brother, uh, brother so and so in, in a positive and carried way where you believe it is by faith. Start calling them words that add value, that are prophetic. Don't start pointing fingers, throwing your hands and saying, who you are jiharibu? Who you are jiharibu? Nobody, I repeat again, that nobody wants to destroy himself or herself. We all would wish to live a godly life where we live nicely, where we are free of bondage of alcoholism and prostitution and all those kind of uh, uh, defilement from the enemy. But we would wish to live a happy life. But what happens? The enemy would want to destroy us and to imagine that it's all over with our family members. It's not over. It's not over yet. God has a plan for your family members and would wish to save the whole family. So be encouraged even to stand with me that we pray that our whole, the members of our family all of them will be born again. Let's pray even as we conclude in the name of Jesus. Father, again, we thank you for your message. You're encouraging us, O oh Lord, that we shall have our family members, all of them born again together. O oh Lord, how we desire that our family members will be born again, that none of them shall be left in the kingdom of Satan, 
that all of us together, Lord, will rejoice with you in heaven one day, rejoicing of your goodness and mercies, oh God. Oh, that is your desire. What a joy, what a fulfillment it shall be to all of us together. And so give us the grace, Lord, even to understand and even to take action by faith to have our family members born again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.